Welcome back. The tune track is a great example design problem. We optimize the way in which humans interact with their environment. Have you seen or thought of other human device interactions that could be improved? Here's a great example. In 2007, Amy was the first athlete with a physical disability invited to race in the elite able body division of the New York City Triathlon. And Amy lost her left limb below her knee and wears a prosthesis. If you look at her prosthesis, it looks nothing like a foot or an ankle, but it has dynamics that are tuned to absorb energy during the early stance phase of running, and then that energy that's stored is delivered, lifting her body and propelling it into the air during the second part of the stance phase. Now, almost every manufacturer of shoes has attempted to optimize the mechanics of their shoes to improve some aspect of performance. For example, the Reebok has a progressively damped heel. This damping removes energy from the system, so this might decrease performance, but it might help soften the impact of the heel on the ground. Merrill has used a method to tune the firmness of its shoe. Now, I like this concept because of tuning, because you may want to adjust the stiffness of your shoe to train at various speeds or for subjects of different mass. Now, Nike has made many attempts to develop a shoe that cushions and stores and returns energy, and recently they've had some great success. Roger Crom and his collaborators evaluated a prototype running shoe that Nike built, and it included a carbon fiber plate embedded in an elastic foam insole, shown here. When a force is applied to the shoe, like by this Instron machine here, it can tell us something about the storage and return of elastic energy. And a comparison between this prototype shoe and a standard running shoe used by marathon runners revealed that the prototype shoe stored more elastic energy when it was deformed and returned a higher percentage. So what I'm showing you here is the force versus deformation curve for a standard shoe. And what you see is that a single compression and relaxation stored and returned 3.56 joules, it was 75.9% efficient at returning energy. The energy that's lost is in this area here. The Nike prototype was more efficient, 87%, and it stored and returned 7.46 joules. You see this area of lost energy is smaller. When 18 elite athletes ran in these shoes, their energetic cost of running decreased by an average of 4% compared to Stanford standard marathon running shoes. And that provided an advantage much like the tuned track that was developed four decades earlier. Well, how about this spring? Cole Simpson, Kara Welker, Scott Ulrich, Sean Sketch, and others who were students in this class had the nifty idea of connecting the leg with a spring. And you can see Kara Welker running on the beach near Stanford here with her legs connected by a leg spring. By tying the legs together, there was storage and return of elastic energy in this elastic band that we called an exotendon. This saved some energy of swinging the legs during the swing phase and it also made individuals transition to have shorter strides and saved energy during the stance phase. The total savings was on the order of 6%, which is quite a significant savings with a very simple device. You need to be careful when tuning floors. I'm showing you a picture of Stanford's basketball stadium here. The old floor was insta installed in 1969 and it was designed to be really springy to reduce injuries. And it was kind of fun to run on when you ran across the floor. It was super bouncy. 
What we found though, in a 10 year period, the Stanford men's basketball team had a three times the rate of injuries of other people in what was then the, the Pac-10. So why do you think there was an increase in injuries in basketball where a springy floor might be better from running? Well, I have an idea and you might have some too. Humans are very well tuned to know where your body is in space and when to expect your foot to hit the ground. So if the floor is not where you expect it, it could lead to injuries. I'm sure you all know the phenomenon. If you think there's a, a stair coming up and um, it's not, it's the end of the, the, the staircase and it's not what you anticipated, you could actually fall down and injure yourself. Now this is a smaller version of that where people next to you are jumping up and down, the floor is moving just you know a centimeter or a little bit more and you might not land when you expect. So running is steady state. Basketball is more episodic and the mechanics of the sport are different. So that has to be taken into account when you're designing sports. So the tuned track is a fantastic example of what you can do with a little bit of knowledge of biomechanics and a great deal of creativity. So you could do something fantastic in biomechanics. What will it be? One of the things I want you to see over the course of this class is that you actually have the know-how to do something creative that makes the world a better space. So what I want to do is just close out with a few compelling examples of springs in biomechanics, hopefully to get your creative juices flowing. Was Curious George curious about biomechanics? These non-human primates have clearly figured out elastic mechanisms. On the left, you see this animal using the springiness of the tree to make a leap that is many body lengths, certainly with the capacity to set an Olympic record in the long jump. And on the right, this animal's also using the elasticity of the tree in his arboreal locomotion, where he uses the springiness of his upper extremities together with the springiness of the tree to, to move efficiently. Now, it's not clear for this athlete of the week what they're actually achieving, but you can certainly see that it's a spring-loaded motion. And perhaps when you see this, you can think about how you might design a machine that hops or walks, something like this. Or maybe for this athlete of the week, one that gallops like this horse. Researchers are working on this. This is a legacy machine from the AI lab at MIT. And you can see these early attempts really looked nothing like a horse galloping. More recent efforts though, shown here for example, by Sungbae Kim at MIT, has produced some really amazing um, galloping robots that can overcome barriers. And spinning out of the leg lab at MIT at Boston Dynamics, have also produced robots that are incredibly strong um, beginning to use elastic mechanisms, but really show the way of what biomechanics and robotics can do together. So just some main points. First is that you've now understood the basic equations for dynamic systems. Spring, F equals Kx, of course, Newton's second law, F equals Ma, and also the equation for a dash pot. I also wanted you to see that you can get a lot of mileage out of a very simple model. And this is an example of success of, of biomechanics in action. So what will you do in biomechanics? I know you can do something great.